You're watching the news summary on Kazakh TV. I'm Jana Sagandikova and today we'll review the major news of this week from Kazakhstan. One of the most discussed topics of this week was the emergency landing of an aircraft without its front wheels in Astana. Let's watch again how Kazakh pilots Dmitry Rodin and Vadim Smirchansky landed the plane. Prior to landing, the front wheels of the Fokker failed to open. According to the captain of the crew Rodin, there was no other alternative as to make a belly landing. Before the landing, though, he contacted the airport's ground services and asked to fill the runway with special foam, which helped soften the connection with the ground. Also, the experience and actions of the pilots helped save the lives of 116 passengers aboard. Veterans of aviation and the aircraft captain Rodin told the Kazakh TV team how it all happened. This video footage instantly spread all over the Kaznet. People saw the video of an emergency landing and shocked passengers. However, getting out of the plane, people didn't hurry to leave the place. They started taking photos from all sides to memorize the event when dozens of people miraculously survived. There hadn't been such cases in the entire history of the Soviet Union, although Aeroflot is the largest airline and there were no such cases. Makash Abishev is a veteran of civil aviation. He had been flying the aircraft about 40 years, starting back in the 1960s. The former pilot believes the crew of the Fokker 100 controlled the situation very well, showing restraint and self-possession. The worst thing in such cases is when the panic arises. Neither passengers nor the crew fell into panic. The pilots quietly landed the plane and it can be considered a heroic act. Dmitry Rodin, which landed the aircraft with a co-pilot Vadim Smerichansky, calls this accident a simply extraordinary situation. Everything was unexpected and therefore a little scary, but there was no time for panic. They acted strictly according to the regulations, and before landing the plane, says the pilot, first they reassured everything had been prepared on the ground to accommodate the landing of the plane. The first landing which took place on the main wheels, the task was to land softly and gently, lowering the nose. In principle, the passengers even started to applaud because they thought, it was the end. 55-year-old Dmitry Rodin lives in Almaty. In Soviet times, he graduated from the flight school in the Saratov region, now Russia, and started to fly a biplane. Dmitry started working in Bek Air two years ago. There are special training complexes abroad, particularly our training complex is located in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. And every six months we pass training there. Now we can only guess what happened with the plane. Neither our technicians nor us had access to the plane. There is no definite explanation of the malfunction. Meanwhile, the Civil Aviation Committee has banned the use of the model of the aircrafts without a special permit. Beck Air is the only airline that uses Fokker 100 aircraft. The company is going to submit a special technical act to the Committee of Civil Aviation and to the CAS Aero Navigatia, the National Air Navigation Services provider. And permission to fly will be given only with their approval. The Special Commission of the Ministry of Investments and Development is investigating the cause of the emergency landing. Fifteen gas stations in Almaty will be fined for price collusion. Among them were Gazprom Neft Kazakhstan, Aravana, Royal Petrol and Agatai. Specialists of the Committee for Regulation of Natural Monopolies and Protection of Competition have registered some violations. The price of the RON 92 gasoline at these gas stations was unreasonably higher by 17 tenge than the price in the city. Now the business owners will have to pay a penalty of more than 140 million tenge. Since the beginning of this year, Kazakhstanis sold U.S. dollars in big amounts. According to the National Bank, in January only, the population exchanged 213 million U.S. dollars into Tenge. This is the lowest figure in the past 10 years. In February, the trajectory was upwards. However, subsequently, it changed the direction. For the first time, the population started to sell the foreign currency instead of buying it. 
All innovation details which were conducted by the National Bank to stabilize the exchange rate will now be available to the public. Starting from April 1st, the bank will publish the currency acquisition data and other transactions in the market on its website on a monthly basis. Also, the head of the National Bank proposed a reset of the securities market. Dani Yarakishev talked about the creation of an alternative organized stock and bond market. The Kazakh Ministry of Internal Affairs is simplifying the process of obtaining government services. For example, car owners will be able to obtain a duplicate registration certificate or renew it during an hour without an inspection of transport and verification of numbers from now on. In addition, a driver's license can be obtained without attending private driving schools. One can learn driving regulations on the Internet or using textbooks and practice driving at driving lessons with a professional instructor. After the training, people would have an exam at the specialized public service centers. These rules have come into effect from the beginning of April. The Interior Ministry has also introduced a simplified payment system for the administrative fines. One can easily find out what the amount of the penalty is at any public service center and then make the payment at any bank. Drivers will not have to contact the traffic police anymore. In addition, the re-registration process of registration certificates was also simplified. Previously, if drivers lost the vehicle registration certificate, they had to drive the vehicle to the specialized public service center where officers inspected the transport and checked the number plate to constitute an act. And only after that, the document was issued. Now the drivers need only one document to get a new registration certificate. The only introduced model of interaction between the police and population will be further improved, according to the deputy minister. A draft law on the road traffic was recently directed to the Majalis for review. If it gets approved, drivers will be exempted from taking the test after their license expire. However, currently the MPs are reviewing another initiative. The ID and passport issuance period has been reduced by 15 days. Yerlan Turgenbaev noted that Kazakhs had to wait for about a month to get the new personal ID documents because the delivery was carried out across Kazakhstan from only Almaty and Astana. This year, more centers for the production of documents opened in October to reduce the issuance period of passports and identity cards. Two years earlier, such centers were opened in Shimkent. The October Center covers western regions and Shimkent's office covers the southern regions. The terms of delivery hence was reduced from 30 to 15 days. Seven Kazakh prisons will be closed this year, according to Deputy Head of the President's Administration, Marat Beketayev. Since 2013, the number of prisoners has decreased by 21 percent. Also, within three years, the number of public bailiffs will be reduced by 70 percent. By closing the seven prisons this year, we hope to reduce the number of prisoners. The released budget and staff size will be spent on the development of probation services and the introduction of electronic bracelets. From the beginning of April this year, the Minister of Internal Affairs itself has introduced small changes. According to the committee chairman of the administrative police, all officers will be required to use mobile phones without internet connection. This is done to ensure important information is not leaked to the internet. There are also new rules in the personnel hiring policy. Now the state agencies will be able to hire foreign experts. According to the Minister for the Civil Service, Talgat Danakov, candidates would have to undergo a thorough selection process and receive the recommendations of the National Commission on the Personnel Policy under the President. A special labor contract would be provided to foreign workers which will not give them status of government officials but executors of specific responsibilities in the civil service. For Foreign employees will receive their payment from a separate fund of the government. This innovation would enable us to recruit the specialists Kazakhstan lacks. Previously, we could not attract foreigners to the civil service. We need those experts that have the adequate knowledge and experience gained in developed countries. Namely, it refers to the 
advanced foreign experience that might be introduced in the work of the government offices. Young Kazakhs are also waiting for changes. Starting from the new school year, Kazakh school children will study only five days a week. By the way, these changes won't affect all school students. The next news story will tell us about the new standard. Fourth grade student Arman Jasulan is an excellent student and also an athlete. In the future, he dreams of becoming a football player, but he doesn't have the time for training in sports clubs. He barely has enough time for dinner and homework. I think one more day off will be useful for children because the studies are difficult. We would be able to spend more time with our children also. They would have extra time to attend sports and fitness clubs. My son wants to do that, for instance. Starting from September 1, Kazakh schools will introduce a five-day academic week, but only the first graders will have that privilege. All other students will be transferred to the new system in 2019. The Minister of Education and Science assured that there won't be additional load on students. On top of that, teachers will also benefit from the new system. The extra day off could benefit them in self-education, for instance. The introduction of the five-day school week will not affect the quality of education. The list of subjects won't be reduced. However, the academic year will be added with one more week. The school year will begin on September 1 and end on June the 1st. Ordinary citizens are also discussing the upcoming five-day academic week. Opinions are split, but the majority of respondents still tend to pick the five-day school week. The six-day school week is good. One day for rest is enough. It is necessary for children to have a good rest so that they study well. It is very hard for a child to study six days a week. The most important thing, he doesn't have time for any creative things and self-education. For 11th grade students, it is quite a load. They have to prepare also for university admission testing. I would be very glad if they would introduce a five-day school week. In many developed countries, the five-day week has been the standard norm for quite some time. The U.S., Finland, Italy, Norway, and more recently Russia moved to the new system. In Kazakhstan so far, the system had been introduced already in 30 schools for the first graders as a pilot project. Some fruits and vegetables could go down in price. The Eurasian Economic Commission decided to reduce the import customs duties. And so until the end of May 2019, taxes on sprouts will be reduced from 13 to 5 percent, as well as taxes for pistachios, figs and dried grapes will be reduced from 5 to 0 percent, and for broccoli and cauliflower from 11 to 5 percent until the end of May next year. These vegetables, fruits and nuts in the European Union are grown in short supply according to the EEC. Therefore, this measure will reduce the cost of processors and lower prices for consumers. Today, small businesses in Kazakhstan are really successful, analysts say. The most ambitious projects are always in demand. One of the main points is the target audience and high-quality product. Such small businesses attract investors who are not afraid to invest energy and resources. It is statistically proven that women are very responsible and reliable lenders. Let's analyze some examples of success from Almaty. The only in Kazakhstan and the eighth in the world business center for mothers showed its first results. Exactly one year ago, Tamilia Anchutkina decided that it was boring just to stay at home during the maternity leave, and she started her own business. Now the third group of young mothers is about to graduate from the center. Out of 20 previous graduates, 13 started their own successful businesses. We teach mothers who want to be involved in the parent business. We train, help start a business. We have consultants, lawyers, marketers, designers, printing partners, and employment centers. That is, we help mothers find new professions. Toys, jewelry, sweets, range of goods of mom. Entrepreneurs are always in demand. In fact, the center of moms, from which the labor market expects less benefit, issues successful entrepreneurs. The project is built on the principle of economic idea. The minimum investments attracted experts and interested investors. One of the investors is Vacheslav Popov. In this project, he has invested his knowledge conducting marketing lessons. For more than two years, the investor has been looking for unique ideas, which, with competent support, would turn into a profitable business. There's a trend that they want to be independent and unique. All they want is to create. That is, they are tired of being just mothers, they're tired of being just wives, and these women 
have so many great ideas. One of Popov's most successful investment projects is Akmoral Basirova. Six months ago, the mother of five children was looking for ways to earn extra money. Today, she's an employer of six women and she's going to open a sewing shop. Everything started from a small cleaning company. Mothers of large families cleaned houses and offices. The opening of a cleaning company gave it an impetus. A lot of mothers with many children asked for work. Someone could sew, others could bake. For instance, we want to provide everyone with a job, so we jointly, with five to six mothers with many children gathered, who could sew and decided to open a joint business. Very soon, we will start receiving orders. Akbaral has become a businesswoman in just six months. She says that the world is not without the good people. She found a room for her workshop, customers, and even investors through the social networks. Six jobs will be created in total and a few mothers will sew from home. Aktau City will launch a new plant for production of domestic chocolates. Tourists in the Mangastau region will be attracted by chocolate figurines depicting the region's landmarks. The city opened a mini workshop and a museum of the history of chocolate where anyone can taste souvenirs and learn all about their origin. And the Kazakh TV reporters visited the first tour as well. Ex-TV journalist Marina Zhirkova, who is now a successful businesswoman who is also known as a chocolate queen. She's posing in front of television cameras and talks about her project. The United Nations Development Program in Kazakhstan helped her open a museum of the history of chocolate and its own workshop. After receiving an interest-free loan from the government agency amounting 1.2 million tenge, the businesswoman managed to make her dream come true. I can safely say that this is one of the tourist sites. Guests often visit our city, and they always take something from our city for their memories, like souvenirs. For example, swans, the sea, caravan of camels, gifts in Astana and Almaty. So I can be proud that guests have the possibility to take from our city souvenirs and gifts of such high quality. In this museum, you can learn all about the chocolate from the very beginning until our days. And not only children are interested in the history of chocolate, but also some adults. Not every adult knows that real chocolate grows on trees and these cocoa beans. Workers collect them with their own hands, clean, dry and grind the beans. This process is time consuming. The final product that we buy in shops can be received only after a few months of hard work. On these shelves, you can find almost any chocolate of more than 150 forms in any variety, ranging from white finishing with salt or any other filling. However, in the first place, the emphasis here is on local history. The collection that was dedicated to Mangistau was very interesting. It includes shells and all sorts of historical items. Well, actually, this is informative. People come and learn. Many visitors may simply make an exclusive gift. It is so nice not only to eat, but also to watch and learn something, to know our land better. The project aims not only to develop the tourist potential of the region, but also has social significance. The classes for children from low-income families and children with special needs also are held in these rooms. Here, children can dive into the history of chocolate and make a souvenir with their own hands from chocolate. And all this is free of charge. Children from Seme exhibited crafts made of natural materials, models of airplanes, cars and military equipment. The 500-plus exhibition called Expo 2017 Through the Eyes of Children is happening in the city. 13-year-old Ilyas Ornbasarov prepared drafts of three power plants operating on water, sand and wind. The creator is sure that his invention will help provide cheap electricity for villages. The best projects of the exhibition will be published in national encyclopedias and be presented in the city museums. Our invention produces electricity at a lower cost than in the city. In the city you will pay a lot of money, but here you receive electricity from nature. Children exhibited green economy and energy saving exhibits more often. Among them were windmills, small hydropower plants, exhibits powered by solar batteries. That is, they present inventions which are very relevant nowadays.
Artist innovator Arlan Ankaov is living in Kostanai. Due to his limited opportunities, he is not able to dig or build, but his job is to present to people his art. He installs a great love for the native land in such children as the participants of exhibition in Semei. Children always paint what they see. Aigul Bitaeva took her eight-year-old daughter to classes in this studio. She draws what she sees, ordinary things. License in powerlifting, judo, and swimming. However, we want to win the licenses in athletics, archery, and shooting sports. The athletes are training. The Paralympic Committee and the Kazakh Ministry will ensure smooth trainings. 16 young mathematicians returned to Astana with a victory from the International Mathematical Olympiad Kangaroo in St. Petersburg. Kazakh students won six gold as well as silver and bronze medals. Students from 75 countries take part in the contest. Each year, the most talented mathematicians from different educational institutions of the capital were selected by the fund Intellectual 2050. Our Kazakh children wrote their works in the Academy of Sciences and surprised scientists. Imagine at first students were able to solve these tasks so quickly. Our gifted children learned so many new things during this trip. Now we hope that this will be a good incentive for them to grow and strive for new victories. 
Just being at school all the time doesn't inspire us. When we went there, even before the Olympics, we went to the museums and we were filled with the spirit of St. Petersburg. We liked everything. Therefore, after such sightseeing tours, it was more interesting to solve these mathematical tasks. We feel that this trip inspired us and motivated us. The famous National Geographic magazine is now published in the Kazakh language. Its official presentation took place in Astana. The first issue was released in February, and now the National Geographic Kazakhstan will be published every month with a circulation of 15,000 copies. According to executive editor Maksat Yasubayuli, the target audience of the edition is the youth. Readers will find high-quality content from the best travelers and researchers from around the world, and domestic edition will illustrate articles of photographs from the National Geographic Archive database, to which now the edition has access. The Kazakh language will become the 38th official language of the National Geographic, and Kazakhstan is the only Central Asian country where the magazine is published. A famous traveler and writer, Paul Selopek, attended the presentation of the National Geographic Kazakhstan. Currently, he is exploring the country. Paul will publish the results on the National Geographic official website. The stories that I'll be writing, mine is mainly a digital project. It's about 90% online. And so we have websites where you can read stories. You'll see video, you'll see photographs, and I'm recording audio. Um, so it'll be a multimedia experience for uh, a global audience about Kazakhstan through National Geographic. The history here is incredible. I think my readers are going to be very surprised to see all the layers of history going back as the professor said at the, at the conference, to the pre-humans a million years ago, Homo erectus, all the way up to, to the current age that we live in, the space age today, right? You have everything. Kazakh has everything. These were the main news for the past week on Kazakh TV. You're watching the news summary from Kazakhstan, my home country. I'm Jana Sagandikova. I'll see you later. Have a good and productive week. Goodbye.